Hello there and welcome to my workshop. Today I'm going to start you off wood turning. I've had so many requests in the comment sections of my wood turning videos that uh, I thought I would start off right at the very beginning. And this is the type of lathe that I would suggest anybody who's thinking of starting wood turning um, to get something similar to this type of lathe. In Australia you can buy these from Hare and Forbes. In the United States you can purchase these from Harbour Freight and Grizzly. And you can actually purchase this lathe with a variable speed. It's uh, not only is it variable speed, it's got three uh, speed settings as in the belts inside here and it has a digital readout. Now that's the bare minimum I would suggest you you get. Um, you should be able to pick this up for less than $500. Also, uh, a start off kit of chisels um, again, around about $100 should be able to get them. They don't have to be large professional type. This is a, an intermediate, quite inexpensive um, set of chisels. That's wood lathe chisels. Your lathe should come with what is known as a drive spur. If you see there's teeth on this and it's got a, a center a pointed bit. Uh, and this is a what they call a live center. It's got a bearing in here and a, a center spike. So you hold the material between this. Now additional to that, I would suggest that you purchase a wood lathe chuck. Uh, this is a wood lathe chuck. Now uh, this comes with several different types of jaws. Uh, this would probably cost you around about $200 to $250. Okay, so all up you are looking at a rough cost of about between $700 and $800. But that will get you started, uh, you know, and, and not forgetting uh, safety gear, uh, goggles, and um, I would suggest. Um, I, I wear an apron, stopping the shavings going down inside my shirt, and also a face shield. This is a must. Okay, so what we're going to do, I've got this beautiful old piece of myrtle, actually. This is a piece of myrtle planking, and I've had for years. <laughs> In fact, I, I don't know when I got it, probably more than 30 years ago. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to turn this into a bowl um, or a very small platter. So what I've done to, to, to make life easy uh, is I've marked it the largest circle on here possible, um, which was, you know, with an ordinary pair of calipers. Um, I just marked it with a pencil. And now you could just saw these corners off with a with an ordinary hand saw. Um, that's fine because if you don't take these corners off, it takes some considerable time to machine this down. All right, so to save yourself a lot of hard work, just knock the corners off with the saw. I'm going to use my band saw because I have one, and uh, I can take these off in a couple of minutes. Okay, so we've got a round blank now. It does save you a lot of work. So we just put the center of this blank onto the center spike of the spur drive and then bring the tailstock up and press it into the spur drive. Like lock the tailstock up and just press it in like so. Making sure everything's done up nice and tight. There we go. Lock it in. So that, now that's firmly 
in the lathe. Now I'm going to show you how to change the speed with the belts. So you just slacken that bottom screw off, slacken that one, put that up, out the, up there out the way, and you have three belt drives here. All these types of lathes have an adjustment lever around one side or the other. I've just slackened this one off now. Okay, you can see they're a little better now, hopefully. So I'm just going to take the belt off the bottom pulley, because that's the largest one, and then put it on the largest one up here. So the smallest one on the motor to the largest one on the on the top pulley up here. That will give us low speed because we've got a large diameter here. So I'll just tighten up the belts now. You don't have to over tighten these. Just firm. And just so you can flex the belt like that, that's absolutely fine. And that's that's it. It's adjusted. Now before we start turning, I'm going to show you the the best way to set your lathe up that I was taught back in the 60s. Um, and, it, you know, it rings true. It, it is true. Uh, I'm actually using an, uh, a, it's actually a welding bench with a um, plywood board put on that I've got my lathe attached to. Uh, and I can set the height of this little table up and down. Now, the correct height for a lathe, whether it be a metal lathe or a wood lathe, is if you bend your elbow, right, so, and just stand next to it, the tool rest or the center of the lathe should be in line with the underside of your elbow. Okay, might seem strange. And the reason for that is it's the most comfortable position to hold the, should I just rephrase that, it's the most comfortable and safest way to hold or position to hold the chisel. Okay, so the chisel is actually in line with your, your elbow there. Uh, you know, you, you, when you're using the, the, the chisel to, to machine, you know, you will actually move your whole body like this, rather than you move your arms, okay? It's much more stable. Not that there's a great amount of um, motion or pressure imparted onto you through the tool, or shouldn't be. Um, if you keep the tool rest fairly close to the work, in other words, you machine away a little bit, then move the tool, the, the tool rest in slightly, all right, and always keep it between a quarter and half an inch gap there, no more than half an inch, uh, certainly on a lathe this size, uh, using tools this big. Um, so, and that's the perfect way to work with a wood lathe, or indeed a metal lathe. Okay, so let's start machining this. Make sure that you're on the lowest setting on the variable uh, speed. Switch it on and there's a couple of second delay and then this will start spinning. Okay, so now we just present the tool to the work. Don't try and take too much off at any one time. A little bit at a time. You know, this is a very small lathe, or a fairly small lathe, but you can, you can actually do quite a bit of work with this lathe. Just work away at it. And we're going to keep on machining this down until we get it nice and round.
Okay, I've speeded the load up now to about approximately a thousand RPM. So now we'll, because I, you know, it's nice and round now. And just start to take this corner around. You don't need to be in a big hurry to do anything. Just take your time. Little cuts, little cuts. All right, now I'm changing now to my small round nose scraper. Now this will clean the I don't necessarily have to do this now, I just want to have a look at the material. So just clean the tool marks out of it. Oh, look at that wood. That's beautiful. So we've got ourselves now around outside. So now what I'm going to do is face off this side and we'll put a tenon on here and I'll I'll start to, this is the back of the bowl. So I'm going to start to round this around now as well to get the shape of our, our bowl or platter. You can see that I've got the tool, the, the actual cutting part of the tool, slightly rolled over. Okay, so I'm just touching the tip in here to get a start, if I can get a start. Okay, and I'm just following it down like so. So what I'm actually doing is I'm rubbing the back of this. I'm starting to cut with the tip and I'm rubbing the back, it's called rubbing the bevel, onto the material to stop the tool, the chisel, digging in too deep. Okay, so you'll notice that I had the tool rolled over this direction. Start the cut and then push it through, holding the bevel, sliding the, this bevel actually down the face of that material. Okay, so that does several different things actually. It stops the tool digging in any further and also by rotating the chisel around this way it's, it also prevents the chisel biting in too deep. If you turn it this way that means the ch chisel is going to present more of the cutting edge into the material and you could get a, what they call a catch. In other words the chisel could bite in real deep and could actually bring this out through from the cell, you know, sort of bring it loose from the centers. So, you know, when you wood turn him, it's, you know, everything in moderation. Just take your time and uh, you, you'll be okay. All right, so I'm going to continue machining this back a little bit, then I'm going to machine the rest of this surface here and then put a tenon in here to fit in my chuck. Okay, I've finished um, taking some off this corner for the moment, or this back edge. I'm just going to surface this off now, and I'm going to make a tenon in there for my chuck. 
So simply I just roll the tool over the other direction like that. That's a pull cut and of course this is a push cut. And let's clean that up really nice. I'm just going to mark a 50 millimeter diameter um, ring now. Actually, 50, bit of 52 millimeter, which is about, yeah. oops, about there. Let's just check. Actually, that'll do quite nicely. So now, what I'm going to do is just machine. A slight area right here, uh, and I will. I'm going to actually cut a slight wedge in here, so my the jaws of my chuck can go, can go inside and open out. And at the same time, this is going to be our base. In actual fact, to do this job, I generally use my pattern off tool. Okay, so hopefully you can see now there's like a, a wedge inside there that the jaws of my chuck are going to fit inside there, open out and grasp the piece of work. So now I'm going to clean this, this surface up here and then machine some more of this around here. the shape of the, the back of the bowl starting to appear now. So you just do it in gentle stages. So what I'm going to do now is now I, I virtually I have now machined the back of the bowl. Uh, so now before I turn the bowl around I'm going to do some finishing on this. I'm going to do some sanding uh, because it's easier at this stage. Now if you're going to do some sanding you need to remove the tool post. Get this out of the way as far as you can uh, because you're going to be you know, working with your hands on a spinning object here. So you want to get uh, this out of the way. So, you know, you don't crash the back of your knuckles on it. Okay, I've removed the um, our piece of material now from the between the centers, and I've knocked off the little nub that's there with uh, a chisel. So now I'm going to pop this out of here, and you normally should get a rod similar to this. You just put it in the back, and 
it comes out just like that. It's just the taper that holds it in inside here. So now I'm just going to put, fit the chuck onto the end of the headstock. This is the headstock. That's all it requires. Get a piece of material. So now I'm going to, just going to fit this over these jaws. These jaws are tapered as well. They're just going to splay out and grip the inside of this and hold our material. Nice and firm. So now we're going to true this up and scallop the inside out. So just machine this flush first. I like to start in the middle and work my way out. Don't be in a hurry to do this. Take your time, a little bit at a time. Start the cut. And just follow it down in. Holding the, the back edge of the, the bevel up against the wood. Like that, see it's not cutting. So what you do, you start the cut with the tip. And then push in and follow it down. Rubbing the back of the bevel on the material prevents the tool or the chisel from cutting deeper into the material and it gives you some control over making a cut. to change back to a round nose scraper and do some finishing cuts here. It's going to be a beautiful little bowl. So now we need to do quite a bit of sanding.
So now it comes to the finishing. Now the sheen or the shininess you see of the bowl is because I've taken this uh, is because I have taken this bowl all the way down to 1200 paper. So I apply my finishes in two separate coatings and that is Triple E Ultra Sheen Wax. This is in itself is a, a friction wax polish. So we'll start with the inside. Lays is running slowly, so we're just look at that beautiful rich colour coming out. Work it in there. A bit on the outside. So now we'll buff it up. Keep it moving. So the next application then is the glow and this is all by U Butte. It's an Australian product. You can buy this online from their from their uh, their shop. So just a little bit on the rag. This again is this is a, a friction polish. So what we'll do, we'll do this in two parts. We'll do the inside first. So this again is a, a friction polish. This is a top coat. Bit of a luster in that. And a little bit more for the outside. Turn it down a little. Just put applied, turn the speed up. Put some heat into it. And there, ladies and gentlemen, bring it around here a little bit, is our beautiful bowl. Absolutely stunning. Out of that piece of plank, actually. <laughs> so that's what you can do. I mean, this is a very, very simple example. Um, and there's, there's no reason why you can't uh, do this um, pretty well your first attempt uh, and you can make some very presentable little bowls that you can use for presents, for Christmas, or birthdays or what have you. So thank you for taking the time to watch this video and I hope it's been interesting for you and 
hope it gives you a little bit of an insight to wood turning. Uh, you don't have to spend an awful lot of money to get into this hobby and you know you can certainly um, make maybe a little bit of profit uh, with your hobby. And don't forget if you want a 2,000 year old wood pen from me the information is below this video. So again thank you for watching the video and please like, subscribe and I have two channels now and uh, there's probably oh, about 420 videos on wood turning, CNC routing, CNC milling, laser um, getting a lot of success with laser and of course all the associated programs with uh, the electronic machinery so it's bye for now <laughs>